From the moment Neji Huga debuted in the tuning exams, his character was given an enormous amount of hype. From the instant the Byakugan was stated to be stronger than the Sharingan, people began to wonder was Sasuke going to be able to beat Neji in a battle? Rock Lee thought that he needed to use the inner gates in order to get the advantage on Neji, and I don't need to tell you guys how overpowered the inner gates are. In today's True Power series and the first installment of the Huga Clan edition, I'm going to break down for you guys the true power of Neji Huga and show you just just how insane Neji was in the very short period of time that he was alive. Starting off, what might surprise people is that Neji actually had mastery over three changes in chakra nature as revealed by series creator Masashi Kishimoto. Neji had mastery over fire release, earth release, and water release. I know someone might bring up the air palm jutsu, but contrary to popular belief, that's not a wind release jutsu, which I'll cover later on in the video. Neji's mastery over the gentle fist was all Already insane, but the fact that he was studying under someone like Mike Guy, someone who stated to be the best Taijutsu user in the Hidden Leaf Village, that should put into perspective just how insane Neji's hand to hand combat skills are. Even by the Huga clan's incredibly high standards, Neji was a prodigy above most prodigies. After seeing Neji demolish Naruto in the tuning exams before Naruto used the QB chakra, Hinata's father stated that Neji will one day become the most powerful and the most skilled member of the Huga clan. In fact, according to Masashi Kishimoto himself in Naruto Data Book 3, he wrote that Neji was the most skilled Huga clan member alive, meaning that in three short years, he had leapfrogged his entire clan. Like Sasuke, Neji graduated at the top of his class in all categories where academy students are measured by, which is another reason why their matchup was so hype. A Sharingan versus Byakugan battle is something that a lot of fans crave and it's something that is still hotly debated in the community today. Would the Eye of Insight be able to overcome the Gentle Fist? Well, I've already broken down the Sharingan in a few other videos, but since this is the first Huga Clan user of the Byakugan that I've covered, I'll go into an explanation of the Byakugan here. Neji's Byakugan has nearly 360 degree vision with the only blind spot being right above his vertebrae, something that Neji trained like a madman to overcome. Like Tsunade stated during her training with Sakura, as a ninja moves up the ranks, they learn to hide their weaknesses and tendencies. As a Ganin, Neji's weakness became obvious if he had good enough observation skills. However, by the time a ninja reaches the rank of Jonin, they've almost completely mastered the ability to hide their weakness but the key word being almost, and it can still be found if the right person pays attention. One of the ways Neji tried to eliminate this weakness was to send Chakra through the area, giving him a way of sensing any potential attacks of his enemy and also using Chakra to slow them down enough that he can guard his blind spot. The Byakugan does have the ability to see long distances, but let me put something in perspective for you. Neji's range is extremely far, even by Huga Clan standards. In part one of Naruto, Neji could only see 50 meters in advance. By the time of the time skip, Neji's eyes had advanced far enough that he could see at a minimum, keyword, at a minimum of 800 meters away with ease, as stated in chapter 263 of the manga. To put that in perspective, Neji increased his range by over 16 times in three years. Now you guys see why I did a whole video talking about why Neji Hugh was wasted potential. The Byakugan is already broken enough that the Hugo went as far as placing cursed seals on their branch members to protect the secrets of the eye, and rival villages went out of their way to try stealing the eye. Any eye that can see through solid obstructions is pretty freaking useful no matter what situation you're in. The eye can also pick up the target's body heat, the molding of chakra inside the target's body, and the ability to tell which type of chakra the person's using and if they can even mold chakra at all. Though this was only revealed in Naruto Shippuden movie 1, Neji's eye was being able to see the specific chakra natures that each person could use just by looking at his chakra flow. While Neji's Byakugan isn't as powerful as Kaguya, who could actually read the minds of her target, see into their emotions at real time, and actually read their memories, he is still progressing at a rapid rate before he dies. Who knows? 
rules. Maybe it's Neji's observation of Hinata during their match in the tuning exams where he appeared to be reading her mind as her confidence began to falter was a sign that Neji's Byakugan might one day unlock that very skill that Kaguya had, but I'll let you guys discuss whether or not you think that's possible. Now, if that isn't broken enough, the Byakugan can also see the chakra pathway system in depth, which is what led to the Hyuga developing their own type of fighting style, the Gentle Fist, a style of Taijutsu that's meant to attack the chakra network itself. Finally, another note of how advanced Neji's eyes were. Despite the fact that he wasn't allowed to learn the Hyuga clan's main branch Jutsu, Neji learned the Jutsu through his own observation of seeing the Jutsu used a few times and trusting in his own instinct to push with his Byakugan and figure things out himself. One of these Jutsu is the 8 Trigrams Vacuum Palm Jutsu. The Jutsu precisely targets the vital points of an enemy and with extremely high speed, a chakra powered thrust that can create a vacuum shell compressed with the effects of the gentle fist to hit their enemy from a distance, meaning that if you're near Neji, he can still do damage to you and if you get away from him, Neji can still do damage to you. You. The 8 Trigrams Mountain Break Jutsu is Neji's advancement of the Vacuum Palm Jutsu. Neji uses even more chakra to deliver a point blank range chakra blast with his palm meant to severely damage his enemy. The 8 Trigrams 64 Palms is the secret jutsu of the Higa clan's main branch. Normally only the clan leader and the heir to the clan are taught this jutsu, but Neji learned the jutsu just by seeing it used less than a handful of times. Using 360 degree vision that Neji has, Neji strikes the target with a series of pinpointed attacks aimed directly at the chakra network. When this happened, Neji blocks the chakra flow and nearly cripples his target. Neji's skill is enough that he can break down the jutsu into stages as being shown being able to use it on multiple enemies at once. Dodging these strikes is a lot harder than you might believe because with each strike, Neji increases the speed in which he hits you. Typically, when Neji uses the Jutsu, he breaks down the strikes as follows. Two strikes, then two more strikes to bring the total to four. Four more strikes to bring the total to eight. Eight strikes to bring it to 16. 16 to bring it to 32. 32 to bring it to 64 strikes. I like to see the Sharingan block that. Like, I like to see a basic Sharingan block that. I'm not trying to say anything to start a flame war, but I think if you don't have Mangekyo Sharingan, I think you might have trouble with this. Now, now, if that isn't insane enough, Neji actually managed to take a jutsu that is reserved for the clan leader, and before he became a Jonin, Neji actually managed to improve upon the 8 trigrams by making the 8 trigrams 128 palm jutsu. Basically, Neji was skilled enough that he doubled the trigrams jutsu and performed the jutsu twice at twice the speed. The 8 trigrams rotation jutsu is another the secret jutsu of the Hyuga clan's main branch. Typically, this jutsu is used whenever Neji is about to be attacked. By sending chakra out in every point of his body, Neji spins in a rapid manner and then he repels attack, creating a protective shield out of the chakra emitting from every point in his body. If we go by Tintin's observation, the rotation is superior to Gara's sand shield. However, as, for, as gifted as Neji is, he can't do something that Hinata's father can, which is extend the range to strike targets from long distances. In the anime, it was stated that rotation reaches speeds of 1200 kilometers per hour, which is roughly 750 miles per hour. The Gentle Fist is the Taijutsu staple of the Hyuga clan. The purpose of this style of fighting is to attack the internal organs of the person as well as the chakra points. When Neji uses this style of fighting, he strikes the organs of a target by sending his own chakra into their body to target the chakra points, which also directly attacks the surrounding organs. Fighting Neji or any Hyuga using this style of fighting is a death wish because if they fought with killing intent, then the target could die. In the tuning exams, Neji beat Hinata within an inch of her life and was so bloodlusted that the surrounding Jonin in the area had to appear to hold Neji back before he could deliver the finishing blow on Hinata. Neji is also skilled enough with this fighting style that he can destroy any chakra-based substance by focusing the chakra in his palm of his hands and 
small chakra needles meant to slice through chakra based substances. The level of chakra control needed for this jutsu is absolutely insane. For as monstrous as the Hugo clan's gentle fist is, the Suski clan has a mastery on an entirely different level. Fighting with the intent to kill, by going a step further, by trying to literally destroy the organs of their targets, which should make you look at the Momoshiki versus Naruto and Sasuke fighting the Boruto anime a lot differently, and it should make you understand how powerful a 50% Naruto and a 50% Sasuke truly are. When only the Suski clan have a more deadly variation of your clan's signature taijutsu, then if you ask me, you're doing something pretty damn well and you're doing something right. However, that's not to say that Neji wasn't pushing the envelope to learn variations that might one day cause him to reach the Suski clan level of mastery, which isn't completely insane given how far he managed to progress on his own, but I don't think he would have got there, but it's something I wanted to throw out because I know somebody will likely jump to that conclusion. Neji, before he died, actually created the Gentle Fist Body Blow Jutsu. This is a Gentle Fist attack that compresses all of his chakra into one blast of chakra to demolish his enemy or completely dispel a chakra blaze attack in one blow. So what did you guys think about the true power of Neji? Do you agree with my early assessment that Neji was wasted potential? And how powerful do you think adult Neji could be in the Boruto era? Where would you rank him? And do you think that he could have one day rivaled Momoshiki's usage of the gentle fist? But let me know down in the comment section below what you think. But as always guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching all the way to then. Have an awesome day guys.